Welcome, welcome. Let's all find a seat. Welcome to Bethesda. It's another wonderful God morning. Do you believe that? Say amen. amen. One more time. Amen. That's right. I uh, want to cover a couple of quick announcements this morning for, uh, as we get started in the worship. First thing is there is a fundraiser alert. Uh, the Impact Christian Academy is hosting a fundraiser in which you can purchase your very own uh, cookbook. These are recipes made by the kids. They're even handwritten. They made the decor. They made the, the uh, little drawing on the front. That in itself is worth, I don't know, if this was at 3 a.m. in the morning, this would be worth $9.95, I mean $999, 55 cents. Or you could buy two for just $50. But no, today for the low price, they are only $20. $20, and it goes to hell. Impact Christian Academy. Also, uh, on our announcements, November 23rd is Friendship Giving, our Friends Giving Meal. Our Friends Giving Meal. So invite somebody. It's at 3 o'clock. You've got two weeks left to invite people. Okay? 14 days. Oh, just a little less than that. 13 days and about 23 hours. So invite people to come with you. And uh, the more people we have, the more uh, we get to uh, socialize and meet people. So, Friendsgiving dinner is uh, on November 23rd. And so last week, before we stand up on our feet and do meet and greet, last week we talked about how uh, we took our own selfies, right? And we said that we were what? Blessed. Blessed, that's right. And so when you were, this week, when you were driving down the road and, and somebody cut you off and they got out and they got mad and they started yelling at you, all these things, Right? You could look at them and say, I don't know who you're talking to. I'm blessed. Right? And so, as we stand to our feet, we're going to do a quick death perception today. That's what we're going to do today. We're going to do death perception. And death perception is where uh, you can tell the right size of things, right? Because sometimes if your death perception is off, things that are big really look small, and things that are small really look big. And so here's what I want you to do. We're all going to stand because we're going to do a meet and greet, but right before we do that, now I want to take all your problems, all the problems that you had this week, and I want you, that you carried in with, I want you just to dump them right in front of you. Come on, you can move your hands. I know you just got one. There we go. See them? Can you see them there? I want you to visualize them. Right there they lay, right? Okay, you got them? Everybody got that? Okay. So here's my problems, you know, my achy foot, the toothache I had, all that stuff. All those are real for me. That's that. So there's my problems. Now I want to look at his blessings. My problems, his blessings. My problems, his blessings. We're going to start meet and greet. I want you to tell at least three people, ask them this question. What are you looking at? How's your depth perception? Are you spending your time looking at your problems, or are you blessed, and you're looking at all his blessings? Now that we're on our feet, it's time to meet and greet.
But on God, who richly, ceaselessly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. Now, it's good to follow instructions, especially the, the Lord's. Follow His instructions. That's really not, that's really a commandment to follow, follow what He says to do. In verse 18, He says, instruct them to do good, to be rich in good works, to be generous, willing to share with others. In this way, storing up for themselves the enduring riches of a good foundation for the future so that they may take hold of what is truly life. And I thought we'd focus on sharing. Focus on sharing this morning out of that scripture. But there's promise in that. As we share with others, it's a blessing and a privilege as we we know church that we support Peru missions and the same thing going on there this morning is, is happening right here gathering together to worship and lift up the name of the Lord share with one another, love on one another uh, seeking the Lord but uh, we just we are thankful to partner with them so uh, we're praying and I guess they'll have I want you to see that. I thought it was pretty good. Father, we thank you this morning for your blessings, God. Truly, we are a blessed people because of you. And Lord, we thank you for being able to give and share what you have blessed us with. And as we gather the, the offerings today, uh, Lord, I, I pray that we would that we would uh, that you would speak to our hearts about committing committing to this uh, uh, giving. Peru and, and to Colombia, also we, to Colombia there that, that ministers to children, and let us be committed at that, God, uh, knowing that we follow your instructions, and God, we ask your blessings this morning uh, on the offering, on the tithe, and alms this morning as we bring them in uh, out of obedience. God, we just love you, and we thank you this morning. Bless the church. In Jesus' name, amen.
more time. Freedom reigns.
listen for a minute. We're going to sing this some more. Do you hear what we're talking about? Can you hear what we're talking about? Every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Every enemy has to flee at the powerful mention of Jesus' name. He said to us, in Jesus' name, we have power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. The scripture says, look to the hills. When you're in trouble, look to the hills from where your help comes from. Your help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He is the Lord Almighty. Do not wait. Do not passively sit by as we sing this song today. Listen, God wants to set his people free. He wants to break every chain, break every yoke, break every bondage. He wants to heal every disease. He wants to open blinded eyes, unstop deaf ears. He does not want us to limp into heaven. He wants us to walk in in power and might. And so as we sing this song, man, we did begin to do exactly what we're talking about. Declare the name of Jesus over your own life. Declare the name of Jesus over your family. Declare the name of Jesus over your church, over your neighbors. Let's practice and do what God's telling us to do. Do we believe it? Is it just a song we sing? Or do we believe it? Then let's sing it. Let's believe it. And as God moves on you, you respond to the Holy Spirit. Shout Jesus from the mountain. Jesus in the streets. Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family. I speak the whole
calling his people back to his feet. Because it's in his presence there is joy forevermore. You know, people talk a lot today about, man, I want the anointing. I wanted the anointing. I want the anointing. I want the anointing. That's what they say. You know what you're really saying and what we're really talking about? Because it's not, anointing is not some separate term for some special thing. You know what we're saying? We want your presence. We want your presence. People say, God, give me the anointing for this. No, 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 no. Look, listen, that might be a way you describe it, but we need to understand what we're describing, and that is, God, Give me your anointing. Give me your presence. Let me walk in your presence because listen, listen, if I'm walking in his presence, I'm anointed. If I'm walking in his presence, the oil of the Holy Spirit's dripping off of me. If I'm empowered by the Holy Spirit and I'm letting him work, man, I'm, I'm anointed. Not because of some special dispensation or some special thing, but I'm anointed because of Him, His glory, His power, His presence. He's calling us to His feet. Do you feel that today? He's calling us out because we need it. We need it. This isn't, we're not in a hurry today, just so you know. I'm not up here because I'm in a hurry. I want us to understand something, man. We're, he's calling us, calling us, calling us at his feet, in his presence. He's calling us for a reason. He's wanting us to realize, man, that this isn't just religion. This isn't just something that we're doing. This isn't just something we talk about. Man, this is life. This is life. This is, this is what it's about. This is not about us. It's about him. And when we get our focus on Him, man, everything else fades away. Some of you have come in here today with yokes and heavy bands and difficulties and trials and tribulations and troubles and issues and work problems and family problems and life issues. And it seems that the devil has just run you ragged and you come in with heavy hands and a heavy heart you, you look at the world and you see the world you see deception you see wars and rumors of wars you see inflation we've sat and screamed for four years because We've blamed inflation on a government. Listen to me. They play their role. But I'm going to tell you what. There's a day when it's not going to matter who is sitting behind that desk. That day is upon us. You can pull for somebody. You can push for somebody. But there's a day that's coming that, that behind that desk, it's not going to stop what God's going to do on this earth. He said there's a day coming when you go to buy a loaf of bread, it costs you a whole day's wage. A lot of people today rejoicing over Tuesday. Listen, listen, listen. You can be thankful. You can praise the Lord. But don't think for one minute that's going to, that's going to move the needle on what God's doing in this world. When God says it, you better believe it. And it's so. I'm not looking for that to rescue me. I'm not looking to that to be my answer. I'm not looking to that to save every ideology that I have. I'm not looking to that to be my rescue and my refuge. But I'll tell you who I'm looking to. I'm looking to Psalms chapter 91 where it says he who dwells in the secret place of the most high he will rest in the shadow of his wings he will hide me he will hide me in his pavilion when my enemies come upon me they're gonna stumble and fall he's gonna set me up upon a rock He is 
is the answer. Hello? If you're looking at anything else other than him, you're looking in the wrong place. If you're looking at your job, if you're looking at your family, if you're looking at your business, if you're looking at the government, if you're looking at an election, if you're looking at anything thinking that, oh man, this is going to make my life easier. He's, I want you to know you're looking in the wrong direction. We need to fix our eyes on the prize. We need to focus our attention on the Lord Jesus Christ and understand that this life is our mission field. Psalmist goes on and he says, Oh, because of this, Lord, I will say unto the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. Surely He will deliver. You can sit if you want. You can stand. You can run. You can jump. You can do whatever. Surely He will deliver you from, listen, how many, of you have, how many of you have had snares? Come on, be honest. How many of you have snares? The enemy's trying to snare you, trap you. Listen. Surely he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. Oh, come on. Don't, hey, just because you sit down, don't get quiet. He will cover you. <laughs> he will cover you with his feathers. And under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. What truth is that? What truth is that? Jesus said, My Father has given to me all power, all authority in heaven. And in earth. And he says, and I give to you that same power and that same authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. He said, I, I have the keys. Satan had them, but I've got the keys. But I'm not selfish. I'm not holding it just for me. I'm going to give to you the keys of the kingdom so that whatsoever you ask in my name, I will do it. Man, does that not, is that not, that, don't you have the Holy Spirit like run up and down the avenues of your soul? I mean, we're not ashamed that we believe in being spirit filled. Act like it. Man, the Holy Spirit's telling us this morning, uh, He's given to you the keys. Stop walking around like you've lost the keys. Pastor Sean constantly walks around. I said, dude, what are you doing? I don't know. I can't find my keys. Am I lying? Can't find my key. I told him, I said, man, put something on there that you can set the alarm off on that thing. I can't find the keys. That's the way the church is acting right now. We're acting like we lost the keys. We sit while the enemy wreaks havoc upon our existence. As though, as though because of the signs and the times we're living in, we have to put up with that. Jesus didn't say in the last days in, in Matthew 24 when he's talking about the last days and all the things that were going to come. One of the things that he did not say, and also my people will be run roughshod over and they will be put down and carried out and they will be defeated. He didn't say that. No, he said that you and I, we're going to walk in the midst of deception. We're going to walk in the midst of wars and rumors and wars. We're going to walk in the midst of inflation. We're going to walk in the midst of trials and tribulations. And we're going to walk it under the shadow of his wings in power. We're going to walk it in power. We're going to live it.
because we know he is my shield. Oh, listen, it's a powerful, powerful, powerful psalm. He says, you shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day. Anybody got any arrows buzzing by your heads? Huh? But you know what God does? God gives you wisdom and understanding and you're walking in the spirit. You just go like this. You go like this. You go like this. You hear them buzzing. But yet you cry out to God. God, I thank you because you are Jehovah Jireh, my provider. God, I thank you because you're my protection. God, I thank you because you watch over me even in the shadows of nighttime. God, while I'm sleeping, you watch over me, Lord. Nothing by any means is going to hurt me. God, you're in charge. I trust you. You've got me covered. You're watching out for me. No weapon formed against me will prosper. The enemy's got all kinds of weapons formed against you. Did you know that? He's got all kinds of traps, snares. The Bible says that he is more subtle than any beast of the field. Come on. He's slick, snarly, nasty. Devil. He's a team player. Did you hear me? He's a team player because, you know, the devil's not here this morning. He's off somewhere in his seat of authority. But I'll tell you what, his team's here. And they're slick and they're whispering in your ear. They're saying all kinds. He, he's trying to distract you from what I'm telling you this morning. He's got you thinking about, huh, I wonder what we'll all go to eat today. Is it going to be Mexican? Is it going to be uh, over to the... Um, Double Dragon or whatever in the world is Kingdom Buffet, Chinese food You know I'm, I, I'm telling myself It's 1134 My lunch bell's going off My stomach inside's going <laughs> And I'm not even really hungry Come on It's just the hour Devil uses all kinds of little things to distract us what does he use? People and circumstances. All these little things to distract us. And what we continue to walk in and we fail to realize is that moment by moment by moment, we have the power to put him and those that work with him in their place. Pestilence that walks in darkness. No destruction that lays and lies in waste at noonday. Listen, a thousand will fall at your right side and ten left you at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come nigh to you. Man. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward. You see the reward of the wicked. People say, I tell you, it just ain't right. It ain't right for people. To have so much in this life and they're not even serving Jesus. And we walk around in envy and lust and instead of doing what God wants to do, we're striving, we're striving to get better off. We're striving to get more and more and more because we're trying to keep up with the wicked. But listen, listen, the wicked have their reward. In this life, people are most miserable because they're serving the God of this world. They don't have a hope. But you and I, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter where you find yourself at today. My hope is not in this world. My hope is in the Lord, the maker. Of all things. 
Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the most high, your dwelling place. Listen, he wants us to dwell. God's not looking for us just to show up on occasion. I want you to leave here challenged this morning. I never want to go to church with you just leaving here feeling like you just had a little warm fuzzy. Oh, didn't Pastor Jerry say, didn't Pastor Doug, didn't Pastor Sean, didn't they just preach about all the little things? I just had a little fuzzy all day. I don't want you to leave here with no, I, I want you to leave here encouraged. Encouraged that in the midst of everything that's going on, I've got victory. In the midst of everything that's going on, I am an overcomer. In the midst of everything that's going on, I'm walking in authority and power. In the midst of everything that's going on, I have freedom. Why? Why? Because he is my dwelling place. He is my dwelling place. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all of your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up lest you dash your foot against the stone. I want to tell you something. Listen to me for a minute. Listen to me just for a minute. I thank God for angels that minister unaware. How many of you thank God for the angels that come and minister unaware? But I'm going to tell you something. I want to tell you something. Listen, I know this is going to sound bad coming from a spirit-filled preacher. But I don't need no angel. I don't need no angel. I got the Holy Ghost. I have the Holy Spirit. I've got the dunamis of God. I've got God Almighty dwelling in this temple. Hello? I thank God if you want to send me one, Lord. Thank God I appreciate everything you do. Thank God, Lord. I, I, you know, I, I think it'd be awesome just to see this place filled with heavenly beings today. That would be open up our eyes, God, so that we can see that you have us surrounded, Lord. Oh, yes. But, God, I don't have to have no angel as long as I have you. And you are my dwelling place. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent. You shall trample underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. Come on, listen. Listen. If we're, if we're where we need to be, we call upon the Lord, we don't have to walk around going, I just can't hear him. He says, if we will call upon him, he will hear us. He will hear us. And I will be with him in trouble and I will deliver him and honor him with long life. And I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Whew. Isn't that powerful? How can I... How can I beat that passage of Scripture? 16 verses there. And he tells us in every one of those verses, I'm for you, not against you. He tells us in that passage again, reiterating, no weapon formed against you can prosper. When the weapon shows up, you need to put that weapon under your feet and tread on it. When the enemy comes in like a flood, we need to lift up a standard against him and let him know, you shall not pass. You have no authority here. We need to keep, need to quit letting the enemy 
think he owns us. We need to be telling him what to do. Not him telling us. It's been a few weeks now, but somebody was speaking on how that we do not focus, as Pastor Doug did this morning, on our blessings and what God's doing for us. We focus on the things that are not right. If you focused on the things, even if it's just one or two, Things that you like about me, you would you would be praying for me and shouting to God for me for uh, you know a lot more than if you focus on the things that you don't like about me. Well, man, if we focus on the things that God's done for us, how He's moved in our lives, and the stories that we have, and the things David said when he went back to Ziglag and they had captured their families and his warriors, his mighty men of valor, had he saw rocks in their hands. They wanted to kill him. The Bible said David encouraged himself. What did he encourage himself with? He encouraged himself with the stories. He encouraged himself with the thing. He didn't sit and dwell on what he didn't have. He encouraged himself. Man, God, when I was out there with the sheep, tending my father's sheep, the bear came out to consume the sheep. But I defeated him. You gave him into my hands when the lion came. You gave him into my hands when Goliath came. You gave him into my hands. You're able now, God. Instead of us, Instead of us dwelling, letting the enemy cause us to dwell on the woe me. When the enemy comes, we need to begin to declare, you can't touch me. You can't touch me. No matter what I'm going through, I'm under the shadow of the Almighty. No matter what I'm dealing with, I'm under the shadow of the Almighty. I'm walking by faith and I'm living a life. That is ordered by the Lord. How many of you want to live a life. Ordered by the Lord. How many of you want your steps. Now he says a righteous man. But I'm going to tell you what. That's neutered there. It's a righteous person. Anyone who is righteous. He said he orders their steps. God ordered. You know that the Lord orders my steps. Even sometimes when it's into trouble. We don't like that. Oh, God wouldn't do that to me. <laughs> yes, he would. Why? Does he hate me? <laughs> no, he loves me. God wants to do and have some things in my life that causes me to see some things that's in my life that's still not very good. And anybody, anybody besides me got any poverty in your life? Huh? Well, if it wasn't for the trials and tests that we go through, if it wasn't sometimes for the wilderness journey, if it sometimes wasn't for the dry places, if it sometimes wasn't for the desert, then we wouldn't be able to see those things. If sometimes it was not for the temptations that come, if sometimes it wasn't for the offenses that come, if sometimes it wasn't for the problems that arise, we wouldn't see what's in Jerry Westerfield that after 40 some odd years shouldn't be there. But even in that, even in that, even in that, God tells me, not by might, it's not by power. It's not by your own strength. It's not by your own intelligence. It's not by your knowledge. It's by my spirit, says the Lord. He, he has even given to us the power to take those things that the Holy Spirit brings up at the times when we're least expecting it. Have you ever done anything, said anything, and then turned around and said, oh, my goodness. God, I should be past that. Huh? But, but we don't see unless something happens. I've told you many times about how I get up every morning, I go in the bathroom, I shut the door, I stand there, and I say, oh, wow, God, look at what you gave Sarita. <laughs> She's not in here. Look what you gave Sarita, God. You have 
blessed her beyond measure. You, you're laughing way too hard. You've heard this before, so you're laughing way too hard, Kimberly. Man, you are so good looking. You're even getting a really great physical physique on you, too. You've lost weight. You're looking sharp. And then I, I, I suck in a little bit. Man, God, whew, he must really love Sarita. And then I turn the light on. And I say, I'm so thankful that any darkness that Spirit of God is hiding from you. He's not busting out in your life because he doesn't want you to know it. He's hiding it. These little bitty things. Huh? These little bitty things. I used to have such a temper, man. I, I, I didn't need anybody to say hardly anything or do anything for me to be ready to fight. I, I mean, I, 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 I don't care. Two, three people standing there. Man, just get me going. I'd fight all three of them. The, the, the harder I got hit, the meaner and madder I got. The more blood I saw, the more I wanted to fight. But man, God, God miraculously delivered me from that. And I can honestly say, man, I, I don't have a temper. But I... I'm going to tell you what, even at 64 years old, when I have no business, I have no business thinking that I ought to mess with anybody. I got a bad shoulder. When I get up in the mornings, I got to throw myself out of bed. Thank God that my bed's a little higher because I can land on my feet. If I sit in that chair for a long time, when I get up, it's like, Jared, I don't have no business even thinking. He said, what? Last weekend, I, I preached over at a homecoming for Creekside, the Bonneville Church, over in the, out in the country. And on the way home, I was dry and thirsty. And I said, let's get something to drink. And well, Sarita, you know, she gets her way all the time. She says, I want a milkshake. <laughs> Got a whole van load of people, and we're going to get milkshakes. So we stop at Sonic there, had the van, and so we pulled it up. James was driving. They, they finally brought all of our stuff out, and they were one spoon short because, you know, not everybody got milkshakes. Some people had to get those blizzard-type things. They didn't bring out all the spoons. And so James goes, oh, that's okay, I'll go get it. And he gets out of the van, and some guy behind us that's parked just begins to lay into James. Starts cussing him out. And I heard it. Listen, James, James, stand up, dude. Stand up. C come over here in the middle, James. Come over here in the middle, James. Come out here, James. Come on out here, James. Come out here. Come on, James. Come up here. Come up here, James. Come on up here, James. Woo! Come on up here, James. I want, I, want to, I want to just tell you something. Look at James. Okay? I'm thinking, I'm looking through the, out the back glass, and I'm thinking to myself, dude, you really ought to be quiet. You don't know what this guy right here would just rip you to pieces. Do you see him? That's why he didn't open the door and get out. He just ran his mouth. 
And James handled it real good. He says, hey, hey, just calm down. Don't you blanket it blank tell me to calm down. No, no, really, you ought to just calm down. I'm going to get his food. Then I'm going to get out of your way. You can do whatever you want. James never raised his voice. But in the van, I see this guy. And I'm thinking to myself as I reach over for the doorknob. I'm going to get out there. And I'm going to stand beside James. I start to open the door and Shreve goes, where are you going? Because <laughs> listen, man, you, you grab a hold of James. Oh, man, it's a lot different than if you're grabbing a hold of me. <laughs> I'd have had to get out and go like this. Hey, man, why don't you calm down a little bit? James that's out there cool as a cucumber, man. Hey, man. Calm down. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sherita, where are you going? Well, I'm, I'm going to go out there with James. No, 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 no. <laughs> You're not going out there with James, old man. I mean, she didn't say old man, but I could tell, man, that was in her tone. What? in the world James has got this why are you going out here and I'll show you but on my part you know and you're sitting there, not that I was thinking I'm going to go out there and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull him out of his car show him the mouth off to my, my buddy James I was thinking I was going to go out there and stand behind James Sometimes, though, until something comes up, we don't know that's still in there. We're walking around sometimes fooling ourselves because, listen, I know this is tough on us to admit, we just aren't where we need to be. We want to say we're all spiritual. We want to try to convince people that we're walking in the clouds all the time and we don't got no problems. We're lying. Huh? We're lying. It's a hard thing to admit, but we are. Hard for pastors to say, but it's true. We're lying because we're just not where we need to be. And so God brings things into our lives to get us to see, here's why you need to die to yourself and let me live because there's too much of this in you still. Now, I thank God when he shows me, I'm able to, you know, before I would not listen to the street, I would open the door and just went on out there. But when she said, no, no, you don't need to go out there, I let the doorknob go and I sat there. God's brought me a little further than he has the last time that happened when that guy was flipping me off and cussing me out and I parked the car and put it in drive and went back there and told him, hey, dude. And he could have pulled a gun out. Yeah, boom. But, you know, I'm stupid. We don't know those things are in there. But what we get to when we dive in deep with God, when we lay ourselves at his feet and we're under his presence, we begin to realize, man, wait a minute. I'm not fighting no war. I'm just fighting these little battles. But even in the battles, God's already won the war. He's already given to me the victory. All I have to do is trust him. Because he already says it in his word. That's all I have to do. Because he's got all this in the palm of his hand. He said, I hold you in the palm of my hand. No man can pluck you out. No demon can defeat you. No wickedness can befall you. Because I am the Lord your God. He says in Isaiah 43, 1 through 3, he says, But now, thus says the Lord, who created you, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. I'll, I'll listen. If we just stopped right there, should we not walk around higher than a kite? Huh? Should we not walk around higher than a kite? God says, 
before you was in your mama's womb. Before you were in your daddy's loins, I formed you. I have redeemed you. Listen, another pill for us hard to swallow. It's true. Before we were in God's consciousness, he had already redeemed us. I didn't know it, but he had already done it. Be, be, what he formed me, he redeemed me, he called me by my name. Before my parents ever came up with this name, which I, I don't know why they didn't call me, you know, Aiden or Jaden or something, some good looking name. Jerry. Before they did it, God already knew my name. He already said I'm his. But listen, he didn't stop there because he knew that in life we're going to go through stuff. In life we're going to face some stuff. But here's what he said. He didn't say, okay, I'm going to keep you out of all that stuff. But he says this, when you pass through the waters, I'll be with you. And through the rivers, because you're going to go through some really rough places, when you pass through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you. Does that, not, does that not cause you to begin to... That don't stop it there. He says, for I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I gave Egypt for your ransom and Ethiopia and Seba in your place. In other words, I paid the price for you already. Did you know that? Did you know God paid the price already for everything that we're going to face in this life? Before the foundation of the world, he paid the price for everything I'm going to face and go through. He paid the price. What price did he pay? He paid it with his son. Before there was a world, he paid it with his son. Before there was ever sin, he paid it with his son. Whew, man, that's a, that's a mighty God. That he did all that for me before he even knew how rotten I was going to be. He did me no. For God so loved the world. He paid the price with his son. He gave. He gave so that you and I wouldn't have to. He paid the price so you and I wouldn't have to pay. He did it all so that I could walk under the shadow of his wing. And the only reason we're in trouble today is because we get outside of the shadow. And we get impatient and we get anxious. And you know what happens when you get impatient and you get anxious? You miss. When you get impatient and anxious, you miss. And then we cry. Why won't I want God to? Because you're outside. Hello, Jesus. Thank you. <laughs> you're outside of the shadow. Don't throw yourself off a cliff. Don't go to Louisville and jump off the bridge because you're outside of the shadow. Just say, God, I have made it. I'm sorry. And walk back underneath the shadow. Yeah. Woo! Let the joy of the Lord be your strength. He has redeemed my life. Just sit there and bathe yourself in the river. There is a river that flows from the throne of God. Everywhere it goes, everything it touches, it heals. If you're outside of the shadow today, if you're not feeling covered by his wing, listen, listen, 
just say, God, I'm sorry, and move back under. Don't throw yourself down. Don't, don't go get uh, Xanax prescriptions. Don't go and act like you're about to end yourself. Just repent and come under the shadow of his wing. He's right here, right now. He's right here, right now. Listen, he's right here, right now. For you and for me to step back underneath the shadow of his wing. Stand with me today. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because I'm walking, oh man, under the shadow of the Almighty. Though my enemies come against me to eat up my flesh, ah, I will not. Though it seems like time is passing me by, I will not give in because I'm under the shadow of the Almighty. Though a host would war against me, though the enemy keeps bringing every kind of symptom my way, I will not give way because I'm under. Though it seems that no one understands me. And I'm feeling a little pity for myself. Man, just, just lift up your eyes unto the Lord. And begin to praise Him and thank Him because you're under the shadow of the Almighty. He's my fortress. You don't have to walk it alone. You don't have to see, feel as though you're being beaten down. Rise up. Trusting in the Lord. Trusting in His way, not yours. Just realize this. Some things are impossible for me. I look at some circumstances and things and I say, God... You know how you do. God, Lord, there's just no way I can do it. I can't do it. And then I hear a loud declaration. All things are possible with me. And I step back out under the shadow what no matter what happens no matter what goes on i know god's got it god's in charge god's in control people don't know that today church people don't know there's a meltdown going on right now there's a meltdown going on right now you say well if you if you would have lost you'd be melting down no 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 if i if if if, if it would have went a different way i'd be saying the same thing this morning because you know why my hope is in the Lord. The president of the United States is nowhere near him. I'm trusting in Jesus to see me all the way through because he said in his word, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll go with you all the way, all the way. Come on, somebody. All the way to the end of the age. All the way. Woo. All the way. Not only is he going to go with me all the way, he's going before me. He's going before me. He's taking care of me.
me. He's ambushing the enemy for me. He's already fighting for things I don't even know yet. But listen, his mercy, his mercy and his grace, they're following me all the days. Oh, man. I'm feeling Pentecostal. Why can't we get excited? Come on, man, why? We have no reason to feel downcast. Jehovah. Jehovah. Jehovah is mine. And I am his. This morning, I know we've already had a lot go on this morning, but listen, you don't have to walk this alone. Even if you have stepped outside of the shadows, it's only a breath back in. Because listen, listen. You may have left him and stepped outside the shadow, but even outside the shadow, he is with you. <laughs> I, I mean, that ought to cause you to shout. Even when I'm acting stupid, God, you're still here. Even though you might be shaking your head, how many times are we going to have to tell Jerry to not act stupid? You still are just... Where he's at this morning or this afternoon. That's where he's at. Right now, right now, right here, right now, right here, right now. All you got to do is put down your prideful self and your ego and all that stuff and say, okay, God, that's it. I ain't running outside the shadow no more. I'm coming. And you take your step out and you come before the Lord and you say, here I am, God. Stepping back under the shadow your wings, to walk in your presence, to be everything you want me to be. He's got his arms wide open. His arms are wide open. Before we leave here this place today, before we go today, is there anybody in here? What I've spoken, what I've said that the Lord's given me to say to you today, did it prick your heart in some form or some fashion and the Lord's touching you right now and you want to respond, please step out. You don't have to walk out of here the same way you came in. Your week can be different. You can get your focus back. You can say, God, I'm not fighting this battle alone anymore. I surrender. Is there anybody today before we leave here? You want to say, yes, Lord, yes. I'm laying myself down. I've fought it long enough. I'm laying myself down to your will. Anybody? Anybody want to meet with me down here? Anybody? Any woman, any man? I want to step out and go forward. Here I am, Lord. Anybody else? Some of the ladies come, start to minister to these. Anybody else? Come on, step up so they know you're up here to pray. Anybody else? Is there any men? Is there any men in the house? Let us say, I'm not ashamed of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'll surrender. Any men? Women are always up front. Any men? Any men here? Anybody step out? Anybody else?
Father, we just pray for these that are here. Lift up your hands, church, and begin to pray. Father, we just pray right now in Jesus' name. I know you as a father. Father, just touch Diane. Help her, God. Walk under the shadow of the Almighty. Help her to be hidden with the, of your wings, God. Help her, Lord. Stand strong, unmovable in the faith. Faithful, dedicated to you, God. Surrendering everything, Father. sing us out of here today. As they sing us out of here today, go out of here walking under the shadow of the Most High God. Shake hands with somebody. Hug somebody's neck. Be friendly.